firstly, um, I'd like to say I found some of your stuff really useful, both on the uh, men attracting women, but also I think you've made some uh, new distinctions um, around NLP, which other people haven't done. So I've personally found your stuff um, exceptionally useful. Um, have a first question. Thank you. That's very flattering. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, the first thing I'd like to say, though, is that um, sometimes I get a bit shocked by your advertising copy. Um, well, my advertising copy was uh, largely influenced by one person. My my copywriting and marketing guru, uh, Gary Halbert. Right. And Gary Halbert once said, and when it comes to uh, writing, people don't have time to understand your pathetic subtlety. Right. And I never forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and presumably up to now it's worked for you? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, going back, how did you actually get involved in SS and uh, how did you actually find out the first patterns? Well, it's funny because I just wrote a post on my blog about this, that my greatest success came from my greatest failure. I was a comedy writer. Not everybody knows this, but I was a comedy writer in a former career. And that dream died a horrible death when I wrote one of the worst movies ever made. And when I saw how bad it was, I quite literally had a snapping moment in that theater. And I began to stumble around for something else to do. And the first NLP books I read were just incomprehensible. I believe the first one was Structure of Magic. And then I stumbled a couple of months later into Frogs and the Princes, and it completely blew me away. And I spent a couple of years wrestling to understand it, not literally wrestling, but wrestling with NLP to understand it. And I began to see that I could apply this to my own shyness, but also I could learn to communicate with women in a way that made them much more attractive to me. Um, what do you think are the real deep-down benefits people get from doing your stuff? Is it about well, SS first and foremost, or is it, more, or is it more than that? Well, first and foremost, I think it, it teaches men to think about human emotion and human subjective process in a much different way. You've got to remember, most of the people who come to my work are not familiar with NLP or indeed any kind of personal change technology or communication technology at all. And so the first time they begin to look at people as more than just random, random responses running around. They begin to see that the emotions they want to experience and the emotion they want others to experience with them is a result of an internal process. So first and foremost, I think the benefit is you begin to look at people and you begin to understand that they have a subjective world that you don't necessarily share, and you begin to be able to understand that world and to understand your own subjective world so you feel less at the mercy of what society uses as normalizations, chemistry, love. You begin to see these are not things, but they're processes that can be understood, and to some large degree, you can gain mastery no matter what your previous experience has been. Okay. That's, that's the overall really beautiful benefit. And then, of course knowing how to use your language and how to get women talking in a way that creates attraction virtually at will is a pretty nice power to have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you Didn't think... You say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, in a funny sort of way, I find your stuff poetic in a maybe a very strange description. Um, well, it is kind of poetic, isn't it? Are, are there any warnings you'd give people about SS and any advice you'd give to somebody as they, after a course, they were setting out to put some of what you said into operation? What I tell people is it's your obligation that anyone who's under your rules is also under your protection. So I do tell guys that you want to try to leave people better off than you found them. Only, you know, people are somewhat chaotic and there's no way to guarantee that. And that also what you put out in some way eventually is reflected back to you. So that's what the warning I would say. And, and look, anytime you deal with human emotion, Anytime you do that, you're dealing with very potentially powerful forces, whether you're an effective writer, an effective speaker, or a seducer. You're dealing with human emotion, and it's very powerful. But I also believe, Michael, let me be very blunt. I also believe technology is morally neutral. There's no ethical or moral quality to technology, and that's what this is. So you can use it to harm, and you can just as equally use it to, to benefit. And that's true, by the way, with all with all persuasion technologies, and it's certainly true with NLP. People have used NLP destructively, and they've also used it very constructively, and many people have done both, which is the most confusing thing. <laughs> okay. I won't name any names. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you, think, do you think the need, if that's the right word, of SS is, how is it in the year 2007? I mean, you've been doing this some time. Do you think society is catching up? Or do you think there is still a, um, a great desire or need for this sort of thing? 
I think speed seduction is always in some way going to be on the outside, even though it's been popularized in books like The Game, the best-selling book written by Neil Strauss. And it, I see some of it in some TV shows, et cetera, et cetera. It's always going to be less than mainstream because it's challenging some fundamental ideas about how men and women work. The idea that it's chemistry, that it's just something that happens. It's also a big challenge to the dating game. A large part of my influence in creating the whole Ross Jeffries persona and, and part of the idea behind speed seduction came from uh, a mathematician by the name of Ed, Edward Thorpe. Uh, and Thorpe wrote a book called Beat the Dealer. He was the first person to actually figure out the mathematics of blackjack. Right. And he explained a betting strategy that was so powerful that actually Vegas, the casinos, were forced to change the rules or they would lose their advantage. And so I sort of view, in a sense, speed seduction as a beat the system kind of thing. I always had that appeal to me when I was a kid, you know, ways to beat the system. It's a way for guys to beat the dating game because for many men, for most men, I think, unless you're at the very pinnacle of power and good looks and money and wealth, for most men, the dating game is a form of gambling. You're spinning that horny roulette wheel hoping that the numbers are going to turn up, you know, 69, 69, 69. You're you're really betting, you're gambling. You know, the the whole lingo around dating, if you will, like maybe I'll get lucky. Well, luck, if you were taking a plane from England to the United States and you asked the pilot, how are you going to make sure you get to America? And he really seriously said, I don't know, maybe we'll get lucky. You would be wise to get off that plane. So part of speed seduction, the whole idea is it really is a, a way to stack the deck back in your favor, beat the house, okay. that sort of thing. Does that make sense? That makes absolute sense. So the house is always going to get the, – the house – Traditional media, traditional dating is always going to be against speed seduction. And those entities that make money off traditional dating, movies, entertainment, restaurants, are not going to like speed seduction. So it's never going to be mainstream, okay. ever. Okay. How has your own training changed over the years? What, what are you doing differently now in a training than you maybe would uh, Well, doing? a huge part of what I'm doing now is exploring how people uh, – a huge part of what I'm doing is not NLP, but rather is a reflection of my studies of – ritual magic, but even more importantly, Vipassana meditation. I've been deeply, profoundly influenced by the work of my Vipassana teacher, Shinzen Young. You should check out his website, Shinzen, S-H-I-N-Z-E-N dot org. But Shinzen has taught the meditation practice is quite profound, far more radically transforming than I think NLP has ever been for me. And actually, I would say that uh, Shinzen has had even the work in thinking of Shinzen it's had a greater influence on me than Erickson or Bandler. He's really quite remarkable. So I'm teaching guys a lot about how to detangle emotion, how to separate emotions from each other and then separate emotions from the stories that feed the emotions and the emotions feed the stories that keep us trapped in like a loop. It's quite profound. I'm teaching a lot about that. And also a lot of what I'm teaching now is how to be attracted to women using four different attraction vibes. It's true. I still teach a lot about language because I'm in love with language. But the energetic vibe, the attitudes that you take are like the conductive medium through which your language is either going to pass or not pass or pass clean or pass with a lot of noise. So I'm actually teaching, a lot of what I'm teaching is is energetic and uh, emotional control of yourself. And then then there's always the language bit too. But a lot of the emphasis on speech reduction as far as language is asking questions, elicitation questions, if you will, that get the women talking. And you're actually using her responses you said that it was some of the stuff you were looking at was better than NLP. Um, being a yeah. bit, being a bit. Uh, let me just say, being, uh, actually, I didn't say better. Yeah. Uh, with all due respect, Michael, what okay. I said is, it's more radical, meaning going right down to the root. If you want to talk about subjective experience, uh, there's there's subjective experience that largely is unconscious, right. and to become conscious of those things requires a, a deep meditation practice. How do you think, or do you think, um, speed and conduct seduction can be applied to business? Is there a relevance there? Many, well, I'm actually working on finishing a product on that, how to put hypnotic language into your copywriting. But I, I think many of my students use it for that. First of all, state control, right. controlling your state. Rapport is profoundly powerful. And learning to use language that presupposes your outcome is really, really powerful. So if you say to an interviewer, you know, if you say something like, you know, as we're sitting here talking today, I know you have to evaluate who's the right person for you and, you know, I'm not sure whatever that process is that you use as that's going on as we're speaking. I just want to let you know if there's anything you really, truly want to know about me, I'm happy to tell you. And uh, and 
you know, that sort of thing. So like future pacing with that person already having hired you, looking back on this moment and feeling good about it, that sort of thing. Moving on from that, what have you got coming up in the future? Well, um, let me see. There's a project that I'm working on that I really can't discuss with someone else who's <laughs> big in the seduction committee. That'll be launched and announced October 1st. I'm under a uh, non-disclosure agreement, but it's right. going to be gigantic, and it's really going to spread the word of speech seduction. But I am coming to England. I don't know when this is going to air, but I will be in London September 7th, 8th, and 9th right. and doing a Magic and Psychic Influence seminar. And then September 14th, 15th, and 16th, I will be in London doing a Speed Seduction seminar. Those are my only European appearances for 2007. If you want to find out more about that, please go to my website, speedseduction.biz. Speedseduction.biz. Biz. Don't go to any other URL, any other <laughs> website address. That is my address. There's a mirror site out there that is not me. Speedseduction.biz, and you can find out more about it. Okay, okay. Is but I also want to yeah. say, I also, I also want to say one more thing. As much as I, uh, as much as I want to promote my own business and my own work, again, I have to give massive credit to the work of Shinzen Young. I, as you know, I've been involved in NLP since 1987. Yeah. I've met all the big names. I've met many teachers. He, Shinzen is far and away the most intelligent person I've ever met and the greatest teacher I've ever met. He, his work, he has done for meditation what Milton Erickson did for hypnosis. So I urge people to go check out his website, Shinzen, S-H-I-N-Z-E-N dot org. His work is, is profound. Is there any last thing? I'm going to ask you to repeat your web details again, but before you do that, is there any final thing you'd like to say to anybody listening? I would. I would. What I'd like to say to the uh, men listening to this is I know some of you know me and like my work. Some of you know me and don't like it. Many of you are just puzzled by my marketing. But what I want to say to guys is having choice and power and variety with women is your birthright. It's what you really want no matter how society or feminists or anyone try to shun, shun you or shame you out of that desire. And there is a way to do that without having to bully or beg or buy or booze, and that's speed seduction. I've helped thousands of guys over the last, geez, I've been doing this since just over 15 years. So check out the website, speedseduction.biz, and I really want to thank Michael for the opportunity to reach some very intelligent people. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, it's NLP trainer Michael Beale here, thanking you for listening to one of our experts' podcast series. If you haven't already done so, do consider registering at nlp-experts.org. There's some really good stuff there. If you want to contact me for any reason, give me a call, UK 01908 506 563, or internationally, plus 44. 1908-506-563. Much success to you. Take care. Enjoy. Take care. Enjoy. Take care.